One, each human being comes into this world as a moral agent with equal standing to every other human being. Two, each individual has the capacity to choose. Human beings are neither pre-programmed automata nor Pavlonian creatures destined to react to all stimuli in unalterable ways. Three, adults ought to be responsible for the choices they make. Each adult deserves to reap the rewards that comes from good choices and should suffer the consequences that come from bad choices. Four, each adult knows his or her interests better than anyone else does, and each adult has stronger incentives than anyone else to look after those interests. Five, each person cares more about himself or herself and about those whom he or she loves and befriends than that person cares about strangers. Put differently, no person will consistently value the welfare of strangers as highly as he or she values his or her own welfare. Six, voluntary exchanges are advantageous to all parties to such exchanges. Seven, voluntary exchanges that are conducted across political borders differ in no essential ways from voluntary exchanges that take place entirely within political borders. Eight, the initiation of coercion is almost always unjustified and is never justified by good intentions alone. Nine, the world has, and will always have, an abundance of people willing, even eager, to prey on their fellow human beings. And many of these predators are skilled at masking their predatory intentions behind a veneer of faux benevolence. 10. Official power over others, that is, the ability to initiate coercion without incurring the disapproval of society, is, for those who hold such power, intoxicating. Holding and exercising official power is less a public service and more a personal and almost vulgar thrill. 11. Those who will most successfully seek to be in positions to initiate coercion will be those persons who have the fewest qualms about imposing their wills on others. Holders of official power will be disproportionately drawn from the ranks of predators and the officious. 12. Most of what is done by modern states is done through the initiation of coercion. This reality is no less true in stable democracies than in authoritarian hellholes. There will be no removal of masks to consume alcohol outdoors. So you will no longer be able to remove your mask to drink a cocktail uh, at a pop-up beer garden on a footpath uh, as part of a pub crawl. 13. Modern society, including, of course, the economy, is inconceivably complex. 14. Social and economic complexity arises and grows only insofar as individuals are free to act peacefully as they choose. That is, are free to act peacefully without worrying that coercion will be initiated against them. 15. Initiating coercion with the intent to improve society or the economy will inevitably unleash consequences unintended by the initiators and unforeseen by those who encourage such use of coercion. 16. Unaware of unintended consequences, those who initiate coercion to improve society are too likely to make matters worse rather than better. 17. Self-interest, creativity, and competition within private property-based markets are very robust. Opportunities to gain will eventually be sought out and exploited. 18. Individuals who stand to reap personal benefits by exploiting opportunities to gain are much more likely to seek out or to notice such opportunities and to exploit these opportunities as effectively as possible than are individuals who do not stand to reap personal benefits by doing so. One important implication is that whenever a politician, pundit, preacher, or professor insists that the state should initiate coercion to solve some alleged problem, that person is highly likely to be mistaken. 19. Each person is less willing to take some action. The greater are the costs to that person of taking that action and the fewer are the benefits to that person of taking that action. 20. Other than breathable air and gravity, 
Nothing in this world that is of use to humans is free. Getting more of one thing always requires getting less of some other thing or things. Contrary to the juvenile assumption made by so many people on the political left, classical liberals are deeply skeptical of the initiation of coercion by government, not because they generally object to the stated intentions of those who call for more government intervention, but rather because they believe that such intervention will either not achieve the intended goal, or will do so only by creating larger problems, or often both.